When Nazi Germany invaded Poland in September of 1939, my mother was eight years old. A daughter of middle-class Jews who saw themselves as more Polish, really, than Jewish. My grandfather, Lalek, had been called into the Polish military. He and others fought in the mistaken hope that if they held the German army off long enough, England and France would come to their aid. He was captured by the Soviets, and it would be years before my mom and grandmother knew if he were even alive. In Warsaw, my mom's birthplace and hometown, the Nazis took control of daily life. Some relatives used international connections and money, made their way to Switzerland or Palestine and then New York. But my great-grandmother was ill, too sick to travel. My grandmother refused to leave her, and my mom refused to leave her mom. It wasn't long before they found themselves in the Jewish ghetto of Warsaw, as the trap closed shut around them. With help and luck, they somehow managed to escape the ghetto, and my mom and grandmother found places to hide outside. My great aunt's husband, Uncle Franek, was not Jewish. A Yugoslavian diplomat, he arranged false papers for my mom, a new name. She was baptized and taken in by a Catholic family. No longer Vanda, now she would be Barbara. She said she once went into the bathroom and wrote her name over and over again on a piece of paper so she would never forget it before tearing the paper to pieces and flushing it down the toilet. Seven years later, after the war, my mom, my grandmother, and my grandfather were reunited, all three of them somehow. Crushed and wounded, but not beaten, they made their way to England to await permission to immigrate to the US, a process that would take several years. My mother wound up at an English boarding school where she said she understood English, but didn't speak it. A diligent student, she started medical school in Dublin and despite struggles with anxiety and depression, earned her medical degree in psychiatry, one of only a handful of women in her class. Soon, she was able to join her parents in New York City and, you might say, begin her life anew. But it wasn't possible to leave the past behind. The war haunted her. Dark memories clouded her joy. Chronic and severe depression stalked her throughout her life, throughout our lives as a family. We never knew when it would strike. Some days she wouldn't be able to get out of bed, and our family gingerly made our way through another episode, helpless to rescue her and never knowing when it would end. My mom died nearly four years ago. For a time, I was angry and bitter, choked with selfish questions. How could she go? How could she leave me like this? We had so much unfinished business, including stories never told. I'm asking myself other questions now, questions that will never be answered. What was it like for her? What must it have been like coming to this new place having been exiled from her home with barely her life. But I still hold a gift she left me. Before she died, my mother and I traveled together to Warsaw. We stayed in an old house, one of the few that remained from before the war, most of the city having been pounded into rubble. She once again walked the streets of her hometown, now so different from when she was a child. We were walking arm in arm down one of the main avenues in Warsaw, traffic passing and people bustling on the sidewalk. When my mom stopped for a moment, seeming to focus on something far off, there was a broken water pipe here, she said to me. You see, in August of 1944, five years after the Germans first invaded the city of Warsaw, the Polish underground resistance freed parts of the city from the Nazis for two long months. My mom was a courier for the underground, where even while risking her life for the resistance, she kept her Jewish identity a secret. 
This street corner was where they came to get drinking water during the uprising. I later learned it was also where she'd seen Uncle Franek for the last time. He was killed in the first few days of the uprising. My mother was 13 years old. During our visit to Warsaw, I would catch my mom gazing out of our apartment window. She was mesmerized by a small, run-down vegetable stand across the street. I realized it probably looked much like it might have 60 years earlier. Stepping into that cramped stall to buy green beans or radishes, I watched her take delight in selecting a few vegetables and in speaking her rusty Polish with the grocer, who was so kindly toward her. Our stay seemed timeless, but the calendar marched on. It was time to return to our lives in Madison. On the flight back to the US from Poland, my mother turned to me and shocked me with a question I realize now must have been in the back of her mind so many years. She asked me what it was like to grow up with a mother who suffered from chronic depression. Today, I would answer differently. I hope I would say to her simply, Mom, I'm so proud of you. Give her a hug and leave it at that. 